welcome to the comfy couch corner my name is megan and today we are going to debrief season five episode one of jet lag the game based in new zealand now if you don't know jet lag uh, it's a show on youtube where they turn the world into their board game they've already had a couple seasons in the u.s europe and they've done a circumnavigation and now they're in new zealand the show has some elements of the amazing race, but it's not as many teams and the challenges are a bit more creative and more based in the locations that they're in um, and they have funnier commentary. Today, we'll recap this episode of the game, discuss the game strategy, and at the end have some awards for our players. So without further ado, let's begin. So in part one of this episode, the jet lag crew starts at the very top of New Zealand and they make their way down to Cape Ranga Sand Dunes, which is a pretty big uh, tourist attraction. I just wanted to show you where everyone is geographically in New Zealand and how far of a trek you actually have to go to these sand dunes. So we're up here in Cape Ranga. The dunes that they went to was right here, giant sand dunes. One of the things I was interested in doing when I had visited New Zealand is to go to these sand dunes, but there's just not much up there. So it felt not worth such a long drive. But I mean, there's some other challenges I'm sure that they do along the way. Another fun fact is if you lay New Zealand over the US, it would stretch from the top of Florida to Pennsylvania along the East Coast. Sam and Adam are the chosen ones to board down the sand dunes for their respective teams. And their boards don't seem like they were the right shape or the right kind of board. They ended up just shimming down the dune. And honestly, it did not look that fun nor interesting. I hope that for people who actually pay money to do this and drive from Auckland, that it's actually more fun and worth it than what it seemed like in this clip. Um, Toby and Ben had a wholesome moment of camaraderie as being the slower runners uh, and I guess just not being as physically fit and they were just hoping that they didn't have to run up. The deal is um, if they don't get it on their first try, we have to try. We're down here praying that they make it. And I just love how in the comments also people noticed how wholesome that moment was. So after this challenge, Sam and Toby ended up winning and they collect 15 coins and adam makes a grave mistake really terrible news i've left my jacket so he has to go back to the sand dune to retrieve it it's absolutely tragic and i i honestly would have just left it in part two it goes into more of the explanation of the game and how the power-up store works and then after they explain that it's basically a discussion between the teams of what route to take and which ones they think their opposing team will take. So it's basically a discussion of luck-based versus the more reliable but longer route. And the comments just popped off about this part. One user said, Sam, this time I'm going to be unpredictable and take the luck route. Ben and Adam, we predict that Sam is going to take the luck route. I love that Sam fully thought about how Ben and Adam always get to do the game plan that they are most comfortable with and still chose to not do that plan. Well said, well said. Um, I keep choosing the high risk option and failing. Also, Sam, let's take the luck route. <laughs> and then this one, oh, this one's so sad. <laughs> Sometimes it hurts to be a team Sam fan. Man is great at planning, but still makes things hard for himself every time. I have to agree. I have to agree. Also something notable is that this is probably the first time that Sam has had a lead in the game. In previous games, he's always made a mistake pretty early on that has always caused him and his teammate to have to recoup time or try to be creative and how to get out of that situation. And last but not least, shout out to Toby's nails. Like there was no mention of that in the video, but people in the comments definitely noticed as well. Those were fantastic. But go off, girl. And then part three is basically both teams doing their challenges. Adam and Ben have to make a sandwich in Kaitaya. And then Sam and Toby have to dig a lucky hole at Cooper's Beach. And minute one of the luck route, Sam gets unlucky and rolls a six. Oh, no. Sam, that's not a one. I know. Oh, <laughs> damn. Okay. Which indicates that they have to dig a hole that is 36 inches deep 
<laughs> which looks literally like the size of a toddler. Like I think I feel like that's how tall you have to be minimum to like ride a roller coaster. And that's literally the worst number that he could roll. Good start. And Sam and Toby end up digging three holes. And honestly, I just would have called it after the second one. It just would have felt like a lost cause at that point. The Ben and Adam side, they have to make a sandwich. And honestly, it sounds like a pretty easy task. And I had to research where they were in Kaitaya to see like how how easy it was for them to get all those ingredients. Um, so here's a snippet of me stocking uh, all the stores that they went to. So I started with the pack and save since that was the only one they said the name of on camera. So thank you for that starting point, Ben. Then I went on to Street View and just drove south until I found Bell's Produce. The third place was a bit trickier because I had to work off only this shot. I typed in Kaitaya Food Mart and found it. The last place I just typed in Falafel and the Turkish restaurant was the first one to pop up. Based on the refrigerator and the red paint, I figured this was the right place. Then I wanted to see how far all of these places were and it looked to be about 1.3 miles in total. Yeah, and they end up making a pretty good sounding sandwich. Is it good? And I'm sure it was delicious. They end up dubbing the sandwich the Kaitaya special uh, and they get 10 coins for that. So it's, it seemed like a pretty chill challenge. Then part four is Toby and Sam discussing vetoing. Toby is quite helpful with her analysis. Like shout out to Toby for finally being a partner that can help Sam talk through something. I saw some comments that said if they dug in the area with dry sand, they would have had an easier time. And another comment said, good lord watching you discover what a what a water table is while sat next to a retaining wall was horrifically difficult but my goodness it's entertaining keep doing exactly what you're doing guys i had to google what a water table was and i wasn't quite sure but what it sounded like is once a part of like a beach is saturated enough with water from the ocean that water like comes in beneath it and once you hit it you're just getting more and more water so and after some discussion, they end up just vetoing. And the decision making sounds fair. They really gave it a shot. They dug three holes, they, um, but it just wasn't working out. And they already got unlucky with the number that they rolled for the dice. I think it was a good call. It was a tough call because it just seemed like they invested a lot of time in this part of the challenge. And holy cow, they end this episode at like 11 a.m. local time. I like cannot believe how much has happened in just a couple hours. I, I really wonder what time they started. Some closing thoughts I have are as follows. One word of advice for the next season is make the team names more themed because yellow team and red team is just not fun enough to like keep up with. As a viewer, I end up just saying Sam and Toby team or Ben and Adam team. It could be like team North Island, team South Island. They could pick some like New Zealand rugby team to represent them. Everyone has gotten more strategic about the game and it seems like everyone has come in with a more clear game plan than in the past. Um, Adam and Ben especially are like a well-oiled machine. They both are in the same wavelength. Uh, it seems like they know whose role is, is whose. Like Adam always drives. They are just like such a good duo. They're like Phineas and Ferb. Mario and Luigi, Woody and Buzz Lightyear. It would be very hard to see them not be partners. And Sam and Toby, I feel like Sam finally has a teammate who can talk through game strategy with him, vocalize decisions and trade-offs, um, which has made their side of the storyline much more interesting to watch than in the past. No offense to the partners in the past. Brian from Real Engineering and Joseph from Real Life Lore, do not come for me. <laughs> and and there's proof. There, look at the comments that are also agree that Toby and Sam seem like a really good team. It's just like, just think about it. It's like they had a bunch of different people who did the voice of Meg from Family Guy. But then when they found Mila Kunis, they're like, oh, that's perfect. It's like kind of like that. All I'm saying is not everyone is a good fit, but I'm appreciating Toby. Award section of MVP is Sam for boarding down the sand dunes and getting their team a head start. That's just absolutely crucial with this type of game. The mistake of the game is 
Also, Sam, uh, for rolling the six on their challenge. This is the first time I think he's ever gone in the lead and then totally wastes it by rolling the most unlucky numbers. I hope that they're going to be able to keep up their lead, but it's going to be tough with the 60-minute veto period. So we'll see you in the next episode. What All right, so that's it for this video. If you're a huge fan of jet lag, let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is also day one of my campaign to be in the next season of jet lag. So if you support that, comment on their video. I am willing and available. Okay, thanks. Goodbye. I'm still here.